What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how I can take my Android phone into Unreal Engine to use as a virtual camera. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know I actually used this plugin a year ago. It had a demo version that you could download. And so I tested out the demo version. I did have a couple of issues. I was using an older phone. I think in that video, I was using the Note 8. And a lot of you guys in the comment actually said that you used this plugin. It works perfectly fine. And the developers were nice enough to reach out to me give me a full copy of it because they said that maybe it was because it was the demo and not the full version and so a year later i want to kind of get back into it i do have the samsung fold phone now which is a newer version phone so i wanted to test it out with my new phone and see what kind of results we get and so before we get started this is the plugin that we're going to be using i'll link this down in the description below but you can see that it's called virtual plugin so if i scroll down here you can actually see we have it works with version 4.23 up to 4 4.27 i haven't tried this out with five yet but that's a test i could use in the future as well and then the other thing that you're going to want right now is the virtual app on your android phone so all you have to do is go to a google play store it's a free download i'll link this down below as well but those are the things that you need to get started so there's a few things that we need to set up inside of unreal engine i have a scene already built out here so where i'm going to go from here is over to settings i'm going to come down to plugins and i'm just going to type in virtual and you should see the company logo right there. I have it enabled already for this demonstration, but usually if you just open up a brand new scene, this isn't gonna be enabled. So you're gonna enable it and then it's gonna restart your scene, but that's the only plugin that we're gonna need here. And then also I'm gonna come down to edit and come over to project settings. And I'm gonna look for the input over here on my left-hand side. So if I just scroll down, it should be under engine and here it is right here. So I'm gonna click on input I want to have always show touch interface because we're going to be using a touch interface on our phone here. So you just want to make sure that you have that on and we should be good to go from there. And so I'm going to drag over my scene a little bit so I can see down here better because I want to look inside of my content browser. And so what I want to do now is come under here under view options and I want to turn on two things here where it says show engine content and show plugin content. So I'm going to click on this, click on both of these actually. And you can see over here in our content browser, it starts expanding with some more options here. So I wanna come down here until I see camera content, which is right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, my actor right here. I'm just gonna drag this into my scene. It doesn't really matter where it's at as long as it's inside the scene here. All right, and I'm gonna drag this down and then come over here to my place actors. I'm just gonna type in C-I-N-E. I'm going to bring in the cinematic camera actor into my scene. So this is going to be the camera that we actually control. So I'm just going to bring it in here, maybe in the doorway, just rotate it a little bit like so. So this is going to be my starting position right here. And then, okay, so I could turn this off right there. And then there's only one more thing I believe I need to do. I need to come over here under my actor, come down here under body. And right here where it says main camera, I'm gonna make sure that I select that cinematic camera that I put in earlier. I'm gonna select that. And then if I come down here under network, I wanna click on auto IP port. And inside the application on the phone, it actually will automatically select your IP. It has an auto IP button. So you wanna make sure that you have this selected right here. And I believe that's all we need right there. So again, you wanna come under AR phone, under my actor, you wanna make sure that you select your main camera right here and then scroll down a little bit under network and make sure you have auto IP on. If you know your IP address, you could type it in here, but I've been using this right here. It's been working out fine. So the next step from here is I'm actually gonna take my Android phone and I already have the app installed on here. So let me actually get this loaded up right here. I'm actually gonna open this up. Let me find the virtual app right here and this is what it's going to look like and so it's a really basic simple scene what i'm going to do is click on auto ip right here and it should connect my camera but what i'm going to do first is i'm going to come over here and i'm going to actually hit play and that brings up my separate window right here and now i'm going to hit auto ip on my phone and it's going to take a couple of seconds here for everything to connect so it looks like auto ip is selected so i'm going to hit connect now on my phone all right, and it took a couple seconds for everything to load up, but you can see now my camera is actually moving one-to-one -one 
with my phone. There's just a little bit of lag that I see, but that could be because I'm recording and everything. But this example is working a lot better than it did a year ago. And so maybe it was my phone before. And what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm gonna link up my wireless mic and move this mic so that I can walk around my room a little bit. So let me get that set up right now. All right, so hopefully I'm staying in focus on the camera here, but I just want to give myself some extra room as I'm moving around here. And I know one of the important things too is you wanna have your room lit. So I know too, if you have a lot of light in your room, that helps because this is using an AR kit on the camera here. And actually, let me change my camera. Maybe I can zoom out a little bit more. There we go. So I'm just using a touch interface on my phone right here, which is cool. It's controlling everything here on my phone. And we actually have a joystick button down here in the lower left-hand corner. So I can position my camera anywhere I want as well. So I'm just using this like a traditional camera, which is cool. So now I can look around my scene, do like an overhead view. And this is looking really, really cool. So I would say this is pretty much on par with the Apple stuff. Like if you looked at my tutorials in the past, I've done a couple of virtual cameras using the iPad there. This is giving me a pretty good result here. Like before when I first started, I had a little bit of lag, but when I moved out into the middle of my room, I'm actually getting no lag now. It's actually working one-to-one. -one. So this is a vast improvement over what happened a year ago, which is really, really cool. Let's see what kind of options we have. So we have stabilization and you should see everything up on the computer screen. Yep, so everything I'm doing on my phone, you're seeing on the screen as well. So here's some options here, like we can actually change our camera and everything right here from the phone, which is really, really cool. Let's see, we have phone tracking. We can actually do camera switching, only put the one camera in there, but that's a cool option to have as well. So let me turn these settings off. There we go. And then the very last thing is in the lower right hand corner, we have a big red button. So I'm actually gonna click on that. That's gonna do a countdown and we can actually record our camera moves inside the sequencer. So I'm just gonna look around a little bit like so. So this is pretty cool. Maybe I wanna physically move in on this table here. Maybe move back a little bit. So it's giving us some cool room scale as well. So I can move up a little bit. See, I'm actually moving through the wall there. So this is, yeah, the room scale is pretty cool on here as well. I'm gonna click that saving video. So let's look on side of Unreal Engine, see what kind of camera moves that we got. All right, so I just recorded that information. If I look at Unreal Engine, it actually popped up with the take recorder here. So I can actually just exit this out here. If I come down to my content browser, come over to content, actually I'm gonna come back down here and I'm gonna turn these back off just to cleaning up a little bit. So remember we turned these on earlier, but we no longer need these. So I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and we should have a folder here now called cinematics. And then we have our takes right here. It gives us today's date, double click on that. My big thumbs actually did hit the button a few times. So I have three takes here, but I believe this is the one right here that we want because that would be the latest one. So if I look at sequencer, there we go. So now we have a camera cuts track. I'm actually gonna select this, hit the play button, and there's our camera move that we did on our phone. So this is pretty smooth and pretty impressive. I know a lot of people ask me a lot of times like, hey, I know you could do it with the iPad and iPhone, but what about the Android tablets and phones? I don't have an Android tablet to test this out on, but I do have the Galaxy Fold here, which is working perfectly fine. And so I would think with a tablet, it will work equally as well. But these are some really cool results that we're getting. So yeah, if you wanna put up the money for it, you can actually use it on your Android device now as well. So hopefully this helped you guys out. I know over the past year, a lot of people have been viewing that video, giving me a lot of feedback like, hey, you really need to go in, check this out, because it actually does work. And I'm really grateful for the guys over at Bio Studio for giving me the full copy of it to test out. It absolutely works. And so as you saw my demo there, 
I'm using a newer phone. Like I said before, I don't know because I was using a Note 8 in the past if that was the reason why I was getting those hiccups and everything. But I can say with confidence, this absolutely works now. So if you're digging this video, make sure you subscribe so you see more videos like this in the future. Leave me a big thumbs up. Helps out with the algorithm. Leave me a comment down below, especially if you use this plugin in the past. I know a lot of people said they had some positive experiences. So I would love to get your feedback as well. Maybe some tips and tricks that I could share with the community here. And until next time, stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you guys in the next video i'll see you soon take care what up what up Wimbush here